1968, a film starring John Wayne, David Jansen, and Jim Hutton came to your local theaters. That movie was the war movie, The Green Berets. The film was directed by John Wayne and Ray Kellogg. A novel of the same name from 1965 written by Robin Moore is the basis of the film, but it bears very little relation to the screenplay. Now, everybody hated this movie. All the critics just thought it was terrible. But this movie did really well at the box office. So who do you believe? I have to believe the public. And they went out and saw this movie by the masses. You see this all the time where these critics don't like the ideas behind the movie and they just blast it in their reviews. And that's what happened because the popularity of the Vietnam War was an issue that everybody dealt with during that time. John Wayne actually thought and believed that the extremely negative reviews probably helped the film's box office performance. And he also thought that the critics themselves were attacking the war rather than his film. In 1967, John Wayne wrote a letter to the Democratic president, Lyndon B. Johnson, requesting military assistance for his movie. The Defense Department had previously helped other war films like The Sands of Iwo Jima and The Longest Day. Jack Valenti told the president that John Wayne's politics are wrong. But insofar as Vietnam is concerned, his views are right. John Wayne got enough help from the Defense Department to make the film. And this was all because President Johnson gave him the nod and said it was okay. These guys differed politically so much. But Johnson was involved in the war and he was trying to find justification for his continued involvement in it. Wayne's character that he plays is Colonel Mike Kirby. And it's based on a real-life person named Lori Torney, who later on called himself Larry Thorne. He was a Finnish army captain who fought in the Second World War. He immigrated to the U.S. in the late 1940s, and in 1954 joined the U.S. Army. In November of 1963, he joined the Special Services Unit A-734 and fought in the Mekong Delta. He disappeared during a mission in 1965 and was reported missing in action at that time. His remains were found in 1999 and they were formally identified in 2003. Now so many of the actors that are in this film with John Wayne, like Jim Hutton and George Takei, are completely against this war in Vietnam. And they really had to think long and hard about doing this movie. Jim Hutton, because of his role in the movie, was mistakenly identified as sharing the same views that John Wayne had. And John Wayne was pro-Vietnam. At the beginning of the filming, George Takei actually came up to John Wayne and told him that he was strongly against the war. Wayne replied to him and told him that so was half the cast that was here and the crew members. They were all against the war and that he had hired him for his acting ability, not his political views. He had tons of trouble getting this film done. The studios didn't want to make it. The people didn't want to be involved in it. And he even wanted his friend, Elmer Bernstein, to score the film. But Bernstein felt compelled to turn it down. He just didn't like the way it set with his personal politics. Now, Warner Brothers was really concerned about letting John Wayne direct the movie because of the fact that his previous directorial effort, which was the movie The Alamo in 1960, had been kind of an expensive flop. Therefore, they only agreed to let him do the film if he agreed to having a co-director that was a more experienced director alongside him. And John Wayne chose Ray Kellogg. The studio agreed with this, despite the fact that Kellogg only had directing experience in a few B-movies. But he had a really proven record when it came to being a second unit director. And this was on a number of occasions that he was used in this setting. 
Now, John Wayne got the idea for this movie when he traveled to Vietnam in June of 1966, and he went there to entertain the troops. Some of the Vietnam village sets were so realistic that they were left intact when they were done with the film, and they actually ended up being used by the Army for training troops destined for Vietnam. Much of the film was shot in 1967, at Fort Benning, Georgia. And that's the reason you see a lot of pine forest in the background rather than tropical jungle trees. The Vietnamese characters that you see in the movie were all played by Japanese actors. All of the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese soldiers are armed with single-shot rifles, and almost none of them had automatic weapons. This was plausible during the early years of the Vietnam War, as many Viet Cong were armed with weapons from World War II. It's been claimed that John Wayne turned down Lee Marvin's role in The Dirty Dozen in 1967 in order to make this film. However, The Dirty Dozen was filmed early in 1966, whereas this film was made in the second half of 1967. Other sources have stated that he really turned down the role in The Dirty Dozen because he didn't want to be making a movie in the UK when his wife was due to give birth in February of 1966. John Wayne was completely determined to have the Ballad of the Green Berets over the opening credits, even though other people in the production just felt like it wasn't the right thing. They thought it was too corny and old-fashioned. Now, this movie is John Wayne's final war film. Although there are some war scenes in the 1969 movie The Undefeated and also some in Rio Lobo, from 1970. But as far as a true war film goes, this was the last one. Now there was a lot of criticism about John Wayne's age in this movie, and some of the other characters too. And it should be noted that most of the actors were considerably too old to play soldiers, seeing how the average U.S. soldier in Vietnam was only 19. Now, there were scenes that were filmed with Vera Miles as John Wayne's wife, but they were cut before it was released by the studio. The scene only took one morning to shoot, but the film was running quite long, and they felt like that scene could be easily cut from the movie. John Wayne's company, Batjack Productions, offered Vera Miles $10,000 for her work on the film. When she refused that, they then offered her a new car, which she also declined. So Wayne ended up making up for this by casting her in his next film, which was Hellfighters. But John Wayne later on admitted that considering how bad Hellfighters was, it wasn't much compensation for her. John Wayne really thought at the time of the filming that the Vietnam War could be won. And so he wanted to do everything in his power to make a film that showed this war in a better light. In reality, most of the war correspondence started out being in favor of the U.S. involvement in the war, but they changed their minds after they actually visited this country. Now, despite the assurances that the actor Aldo Ray would make it through the film completely sober, he fell off the wagon midway through the production and he was frequently too drunk to say his lines. John Wayne was forced to rewrite some of his lines and give them to other characters. John Wayne was terribly irritated about this, and he got into arguments with him constantly about his unprofessionalism, and he continued to struggle with the bottle for many years, and eventually basically died broke. He really went from being a top-notch performer that was a very well-to-do man who had invested in real estate and had become very wealthy. And the old demon rum took him down a road that he just couldn't recover from. He was pretty irritated at John Wayne because of John Wayne's irritation at him. And he made derogatory statements about John Wayne after the production was done. He was an extremely talented actor, 
And it's so sad that he had fallen into this trap of alcohol abuse. Now, despite the poor reviews that the critics gave this film, and despite being protested and picketed in the United States and abroad, this movie went on to be a huge commercial success. Take a look back at this movie. I think you might enjoy it. It's one of those that I tend to forget about in the John Wayne resume of films. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.